Hey guys, welcome to episode number 99. As you can see, these guys want to be fed, so let's do that first. Today is Friday, so welcome to Fan Friday. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to get these guys fed first so that, uh, they wouldn't make a whole lot of noise, um, while doing this video. So, I've got a few things I want to talk about today for Fan Friday. And, uh, the first here is, uh, my preliminary plans for a 300 or 500 gallon stock tank, um, in a basement when I have a house. Uh, so let me walk you through this diagram real quick. Um, first, we're on a concrete floor, um, so we don't really have to worry about uh, the amount of weight that we're placing on it. Uh, then what we're going to do is use some uh, 16 by 8 by 8 uh, concrete blocks and stack them too high. And uh, I'll probably do uh, like a, a circle of them um, with definitely some blocks in the middle as well. Uh, to create a very even and distributed uh, platform on which to place uh, a two by fours, um, which will also probably you know have at least one or two boards uh, hitting each one of these uh, pieces of uh, concrete here, um, and uh, the top to that will just be a piece of plywood, probably like three quarter inch plywood, and I might put uh, a piece of uh, thin styrofoam down underneath to just kind of settle everything out and, and level it. But here's the stock tank sitting on top. Uh, I'm not quite sure which type of stock tank I'm going to get yet. Um, when I say 300 or 500 gallon, I think the two front runners currently are the Rubbermaid 300 gallon stock tank or the uh, Belhin Country uh, 500 gallon stock tank. Uh, I think that one's uh, perfectly round and it's blue, so I thought that was pretty cool, uh, but I'm not quite sure where to find that one. Um, I do have my spreadsheet that I can look at, but uh, I found that it's it's kind of hard to find uh, these things, but I don't have to worry about that quite yet. So that's the tank itself, and then what we need to do is talk about the filtration and the overflows and, and the auto top-offs and stuff like that. So um, first of all, there will be uh, the, the the drain that comes with the tank uh, will go straight to um, the drain, like the floor drain, um, or it'll go to a sump that, that pumps the water out um, through through a, a drain or, or a sink or something. Um, and I'm going to have that on a ball valve. And uh, the reason there is so that um, I can just quickly drain, you know, 25%. 50% or 100% of this water uh, fairly rapidly if I wanted to, but otherwise uh, it'll stay closed. And uh, the uh, the main filtration is over here, and uh, it starts with an overflow, and I'll probably drill at least two, maybe three overflows, just for redundancy, um, to make sure that the water level always stays the same. You know, if one of them is plugged, the thing won't um, spill over. And uh, those lines, PVC lines, are going to go straight down into a 55-gallon plastic barrel. And uh, it's going to be kind of uh, at a, an angle here, so that when the water enters this tank, it kind of swirls. And uh, this is the settling tank. This is going to be, um, you know, just water. There's going to be no filter pads. There's going to be no you know, biologic or mechanical filtration going on here. This is just a place where all of the junk can settle out of the water. And uh, then, you know, I, I can just, uh, you know, scoop the sludge out of the bottom of the settling tank whenever I need to. Um, and hopefully, you know, a lot of that will stay out of the filter chamber, uh, which is the next one. So right next to this 55 gallon barrel will be another one and uh, this will have all my filter media in it it'll have my filter pads my you know biologic media um, and uh, this 55 gallon drum will just be completely filled with filter material uh, so hopefully that will be enough surface area to get the job done I'll probably put the pads towards the top that way the water kind of uh, flows from one chamber to the next 
and it has to go through the pads before it can go all the way down to the bottom to the pump which then returns it back to the tank. Um, also on here is going to be basically like an emergency overflow that goes straight to the drain and uh, how that would happen is if something went wrong uh, anywhere in this system um, this is going to fill up to this level and it's going to spill over into here this is going to fill up to this level and it's going to spill over into here and then this if it continues to fill up past the safe point uh, if, if something is going to overflow, it's going to be in this chamber. So this overflow won't be used unless it's some sort of emergency. Um, or if I'm just like, you know, overflowing the tank on purpose to change water perhaps. Um, and then the extra will just go to the drain. Um, so hopefully we won't have to use that, but it's good to plan on it. And then the last piece here is a three-stage water filter. These are the ones you can get at home improvement stores. And I want to hook this up to the water line in the house and then hook that up to some sort of float valve, um, which will signal when the water level is too low. So this tank is always going to be full because the pump is pumping water into it. And uh, this, these two chambers here are the ones that um, you know, may have some difference in, uh, in water level due to evaporation, due to a water change, due to whatever. Um, if, if this water level drops too low, the pump could be in jeopardy of, uh, you know, pumping all of its water out. Um, and, uh, you know, the filter won't run properly if you don't have enough water in it. So if the water level gets too low on here, this kicks on and it fills uh, these chambers to the point where they're supposed to be and then it shuts off. Um, that will probably be like a double redundant solenoid valve perhaps uh, for that. But uh, yeah, uh, I think that's a pretty solid diagram. Very simple. Um, not a whole lot of moving parts and not a whole lot of hardware to get it to work. And I think it would be a pretty, a pretty cheap setup. So, I mean, this might be about a year away, but at least I'm starting to think about it. If we want to talk about height here, we've got 16 inches for the blocks, another 4 inches for the, uh, the platform, uh, and then another 24 inches for the, uh, roughly 24 inches for the uh, stock tank. So about 44 inches in, in total height. So not that bad considering you know, I'm like 72 inches tall. Uh, so that will be uh, a, fairly, a fairly good height to, uh, to work at here. Uh, for reference, uh, this is about 30 inches high. So it would only be probably about this high. It, it wouldn't even be as high as this tank so it'll be easier to get into and work on um, the only thing that I may have to consider is uh, how I'm gonna get to like the middle of the tank because it is such a large tank I don't think I'll be able to reach to the center of the tank uh, especially if it's that high but um, yeah so those are the plans there um, these guys will be moving into that tank eventually in another year um, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that project. I think it's it's something that um, you know be really rewarding to see and to set up, and uh, and I can't wait to get to it. Um, last week I mentioned that I wanted to highlight uh, one of my fans um, every week, and uh, this is actually someone that I follow. Uh, his name is Bowery Bob. I'll put the, the link in the description of the video. Uh, Bowery Bob doesn't post that often, but he does love turtles. Uh, I think he has mud turtles and uh, primarily, and uh, I think he's retired, lives in Tampa, and uh, he puts out a video maybe once a month, and uh, you know they, they talk about his mud turtles, uh, wild turtles, and he does a lot of work uh, cleaning up his local uh, pond um which is pretty cool so definitely check him out bowery bob go check out his channel go see the videos that he's put up and uh maybe send him a message and and see what he's got coming up uh because I, i'm always curious i always watch his videos uh because they are fairly uh entertaining and you can really tell that he does love uh what he does so 
that's what I've got for today, guys. Uh, since this is episode number 99, the next episode is going to be number 100. And uh, once again, I'll just ask you guys, you know, throw something in the comments, uh, questions, ideas, topics that you'd like me to talk about for episode number 100. I'm basically going to give my life story in episode number 100 to let you guys know you know, who I am, uh, what I've done with my life, um, what my hobbies are, what my plans are for the future, uh, what my interests are. So uh, definitely give me some ideas. Uh, that video will probably take about a week to cut together and film. So um, I wouldn't, I might put out some videos this week, um, but uh, they'd probably land after that episode number 100 video so uh, there might be a slight delay in uh, videos coming out but uh, it is coming uh, I will start filming shortly for it uh, but it, it might take the better part of a week so hope you guys enjoyed post some questions in the comments and I'll see you guys later